Echoes is a new limited mystery thriller series to hit Netflix, and it stars Michelle Monaghan. And Michelle Monaghan has life-switching identical twins. Now, multiple times throughout watching this, I felt a bit like Charlie Day, and I thought I might be losing my mind. Before I get into my review, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Into the AM. Into the AM is a trusted brand that lives and breathes creativity and self-expression. They see clothing as a canvas to express what drives you. Now, you know that I normally wear a ton of flannel, but Into the AM's premium apparel gives some outstanding comfort in their shirts. From sketches to print, you won't find these designs anywhere else. They work closely with a talented team of designers to come up with one-of-a-kind designs that I think you're going to love. Now, I grabbed a few that spoke to me the most. And as you can see, I'm wearing one that has a bit of an 80s retro aesthetic to it. But it also incorporates movies and TV, which you know I love. But I also selected some that spoke to me, even if they didn't have to do with media, simply because I love the artistic design. Now, the fabric is crazy soft and it's extremely comfortable. Whether you're looking for graphic or basic tees, Into the AM has got you covered with apparel that's made of premium fabric blends that represent the ultimate in comfort and functionality. They're breathable, pre-shrunk, and they're built to last. Now, if you use my link, you'll get 10% off site-wide. Plus, you can take advantage of their bundle offers that are going to get you three graphic tees for $60 bucks or three basic tees for $49.95. Plus, you can still use my link to get the discount on the bundles. Be sure to click the link in the description and take a look at all of the awesome designs that Into the AM has to offer and take advantage of 10% off site-wide. Thanks again to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. Now let's dive into the twisty world of life-swapping identical twins. Lenny and Gina are identical twins who have secretly swapped their lives since they were children, culminating in a double life as adults. But one of the sisters goes missing, and then everything in their perfectly schemed world turns into chaos. So we've got Michelle Monaghan playing both of the lead characters in this. Now, the gist of the plot is that one twin goes missing, and the other returns to their family home in search of her. Now, we as the audience learn that they have been switching back and forth with their lives. That obviously complicates every single relationship that they have. While watching this, I was truly lost for a large portion of it. I mean, I wasn't lost in the story. The overarching mystery and the search for the twin, I think they're pretty straightforward. But keeping straight who was who proved to be extremely difficult through many moments. There were times when we were following along and then something would be said that would then throw my thought process completely into disarray. It made me pause the show for just a second to try and gain my bearings about who that particular portion of the story was actually about. I was genuinely losing my ability to keep track of who was who at different times within the narrative. And I'm not sure if that's a clever thing or just really a frustrating one. Now, I don't mind having to work for the story, and I certainly don't like being spoon-fed information, but a few times this became slightly aggravating at how often the story became convoluted. Now, this is an overly dramatic series. Emotions are high, and they're sometimes blown out of proportion in an effort to create intrigue or character conflicts. And not all of the situations warrant the level of melodrama that we sometimes get, but there are times when the emotion lined up perfectly with the characters' behaviors. There's a predictability to a lot of what's playing out for us. There's a supposed bombshell reveal in the final episode that I thought was completely obvious very early on in the show, thanks to brief but frequent flashbacks. And the story's a little bit soapy, where we watch the sister dynamics get overblown and then also mildly creepy as we get more insight and details into their actions. Now, I love the premise of the story that establishes very early on that the sisters are so identical that nobody, save for one person, can tell them apart. This opens up a ton of opportunities for the story to exploit and even take advantage of in building out mystery and doubt. And I think that's where a lot of the story's strength lies. There are a few different mysteries playing out, and they can become pretty engaging. Not only do we have the mystery of the missing twin, but then there's the case that's from their past that just looms over them with this town sheriff intent on solving the case. And then interspersed within these are smaller instances of intrigue that pop up between characters, which then help to build out and then cast doubt on character motivations. This is a seven episode limited series with each of the episodes landing around the mid 40 minute mark. Now there are certain portions that feel way more dragged out than necessary, choosing to show us repetitive flashback sequences rather than just having an episode that's 10 minutes less than the others. Now, as this story progressed, even when it dipped into the melodrama, I found myself getting sucked into it. I mean, some of it's like bad TV, but the kind of bad TV that's enveloping and engaging, no matter how much I don't want it to be. And the mysterious angle in this does have an intriguing element to it, simply because of how convoluted and twisted the story becomes. But unfortunately, I don't think the showrunners knew how to wrap this up in a way that didn't feel rushed and obvious. 
the ending actually felt cheap, safe, and then 100% expected rather than taking a risk to subvert expectations. In addition to Michelle Monaghan, we also get performances from Matt Bomer, Michael O'Neill, Jonathan Tucker, Daniel Sanjata, and Karen Robinson, and they each bring differing levels of entertainment to the storytelling. Robinson plays Sheriff Floss, and there are many times throughout this that she felt like Columbo to me. Now, that's not a bad thing. It's just something that I found mildly humorous in the way that the character was written. While Michelle Monaghan plays both twins, Gina and Lenny, when we get flashbacks to younger versions, those are played by actual twins. Now, I liked watching the teenage versions played by Madison and Victoria Abbott. They came across both as more damaged and devious, and I really could have used more of the series to focus on them and their escapades as teenagers, because what we're shown with them have way more realism in their angsty and dramatic tones than what we typically get with the adult versions. The cinematography is mixed in this. Now, sometimes the camera captures the natural settings of the characters' as farm and then the surrounding forest in very beautiful ways. But then other times, what we see feels like a run-of-the-mill standard television production. And maybe this was just with my screening copy, but the final episode features some green screen work that is absolutely atrocious. I mean, we have some characters standing in a watery location, and every single thing about this looks fake and terrible. And the fakeness is laughable at how bad it really is. This actually caused me to be broken out of the drama and the dialogue that were being delivered in the scene because the graphics were just so distractingly poor. And then it's followed up by that lackluster, cautious ending that I'd mentioned before. The show takes all this time to draw out the intrigue, even repeating sequences to make certain that we understand, to then wrap up the story very quickly. I mean, I can't even say that the conclusion is unearned because it didn't try anything out of the ordinary and did exactly what we all expected to, which I think is a huge bummer. The concept of the story is dark and disturbing, so I would have appreciated it so much more to get a conclusion that matches the tone of the narrative that had been created. So overall, Echoes has a great premise and works to craft an engaging narrative through many twists and turns. The complications created by shifting character identities can be frustrating, but that confusion can also be satisfying. The acting, while melodramatic at times, is effective at showcasing the consternation the characters experience while attempting to figure out who is who and why actions are being carried out. Unfortunately, the story is repetitive, taking what is a dark and devious plotline and playing it safe through the finale to deliver a very expected and unsurprising conclusion. As much as I appreciated it and enjoyed the twistiness of this, the obviousness and drawn-out story became too much and ended up negatively affecting my watching enjoyment. There's sex, no nudity, a lot of profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give Echoes two and a half out of five couches. Are there any mysteries that you've enjoyed recently? Let me know what you watched in the comments below. Also, don't forget to visit the end of the AM link in the description to get 10% off your order. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.